to talk about this. What exactly is Luffy's dream? Well, I have my own thoughts on this and holy, and I mean the holiest of have we ever seen something like this before? This is the first time power on a scale this massive has ever been seen in the series. The highest feat, for those of you who love that term, ever seen in the story. Yeah, yeah, we've seen Anel do something similar, but this is an entire island destroying attack. This chapter is ridiculous, and I mean ridiculous. We've seen attacks on this sort of massive scale in other series before, but the beauty is how it was used in One Piece. Oda waited over a thousand chapters to show us an attack so ridiculous that it could destroy an entire island. Over 1,000 chapters into his story where by now we thought we'd seen it all. From grounded fighting scenes to jaw-dropping devil fruits and sky-splitting hockey fest. But the thing we just saw in chapter 1060 just made us all go, whoa! Because while we may have seen this sort of attack used in other media, Oda's strategic patience in only using it now, this late in the series, impacts the story on a whole new level. And not only that, it benefits the story so much on so many levels. First and foremost, it adds to the level of threat that the Straw Hat crew will ultimately face in the future. It makes sense that the potentially biggest villain in the series is to be feared even more than we initially believed. Imu has now officially shown us something through action, beyond the hype or the anticipation associated with their name, making them a lot scarier not only because of their influence, but the sheer power that they hold in their hand. Secondly, it leads to a series of events that I can't wait to witness intertwine. First, the fate of Sabo is, once again, for the third time actually, is in question. But this time, Dragon and the Revolutionary Army are more closely involved in this situation, having been in contact with him during the entire ordeal. Sabo becoming the casualty of the world government's attack on Lulucia raises a lot of questions not only about the future, but also as to why that island was the one chosen to be eradicated. The idea of an entire island dis disappearing to the point of never having existed is certainly not the first time we've come across something like that before. And Lulucia disappearing essentially with the snap of a finger may just be the first step to finding out the mysterious disappearance of God Valley. And in God Valley's case, there is at least a reason that may be an obvious factor as to why the island was wiped out. That being we know of Roxy Zebek's close ties to the island, though we don't quite yet know exactly what Lulucia did to deserve this. And what this this is, is another question, isn't it? What happens to these islands? How exactly does this power work? Are islands just getting obliterated? How are there absolutely no traces of any ruins left behind? Or are they being zapped and taken elsewhere? The lights coming down from the sky reminded me of an alien spaceship, as if the islands were being zapped up into the sky. Even the shadow of whatever was happening overhead sort of looked like a spaceship. But I know speculative minds are going wild right now, and a good point that some have raised is that the silhouette could even look like a straw hat. Personally, one of the first things I pictured behind the clouds was some sort of aircraft, like a very familiar scene out of Castle in the Sky, which is a Ghibli film that I have discussed before because of the great number of similarities that One Piece seems to have drawn inspiration from the classic film, and a film that I think could be major in actually figuring out this series. And if such an aircraft was to exist in One Piece, then we could instantly relate this to the idea of the ancient weapon Europe. And I'm not just here to insert video plugs, but I have also discussed before how Uranus is very much associated with the sky through the Greek language and through Greek mythology. So, powerful beam from the sky. Does this mean that Imu already has in their possession one of the fearsome ancient weapons under their control? Or is this just their own insane ability, which would actually make them even more terrifying? Seeing how powerful this attack is, what it got me the most curious about and what more clarity on is what element are we exactly witnessing? Are these purely beams? Or are they something more familiar that we've seen in an arc often used to foreshadow the end of the series? Back in Skypiea, we saw a similar scale of attack used by Enel and then later found out that Luffy is immune to the element of lightning. So if it is indeed the same element that Imu used to eradicate Lulucia, this would bring further intrigue into Luffy's devil fruit, which the world government has clearly placed a massive importance on. Luffy may just well be the perfect counter to such an attack and further strengthen the idea why Luffy and the D-Clan are considered God's natural 
enemy. And why the Nika Devil Fruit is indeed, as it was mentioned, the most ridiculous ability there is. Luffy could potentially be the only individual alive immune to this attack. And this fact could be the very reason why the world government is so afraid of his Devil Fruit. It may even be why they were opposed to Joy Boy all those centuries ago because of his natural immunity. Imagine Luffy covering an entire island with his bouncy rubber body just to repel attacks. After seeing the same devil fruit allow him to turn into a giant, bend and change the property of solid objects, and cartoonishly pop his and his enemy's eyes out, I don't doubt that it could do something even more ridiculous. And whatever this power comes down to, it's sure to have some sort of deeper lore and history involved, which makes it all the more exciting. This event actually led to the Straw Hats coming across a familiar face and surefire future ally. Whether that will be as an official Nakama as the speculations have started already, or just an arc ally like we have seen with a number of supernovas in the past. It's interesting that Bonnie was in her kid form, perhaps suggesting that this is her true age and she was in this state because she couldn't use her powers under the sea water. Jewelry Bonnie's addition to the story, I must admit, is the most excited I've been about the Straw Hats meeting a supernova because we've already seen where this type of meeting can go. There are precedents to this formula with previous arcs showing us great moments which allowed characters like Law, Beige, Kid and Killer to shine and allowed these supernovas to be involved in the story in significant capacities. We've seen Law swap the crew's hearts, Beige dressing them up as part of the mafia. Now imagine Bonnie using her ability to manipulate the crew's age. A food eating contest between Bonnie and a much older Luffy, Kid, Zoro and Sanji fighting, Nami and Robin as Loli. Anyway, wherever this story is heading, I predict we'll have some sort of an infiltration scene that makes great use of Bonnie's powers. For someone who was a part of the worst generation, but with more emotional investment into the future story that we have been building up to, that's something that gets me all hyped and ready and excited about the upcoming arc. Finding out what exactly happened to Kuma seems to be where the story is heading, judging by the previous couple of chapters, but the appearance of Jewelry Bonnie all but solidified this idea. Having been shown to be somehow involved in the story of the late warlord who was also a part of the revolutionary army. Bonnie is in search for answers and that is great news for us readers and viewers because it gets us closer to one of the most intriguing mysteries in the series. A story that is now going on to tie in with the search of the truth of what happened to Sabo as well as whatever information that the revolutionary army was able to extract from Kuma's memories. And the potential for this next arc is insane. The Luffy meeting Dragon moment could be closer than we think now that there is a clear story connecting them. But even if we don't get that highly anticipated father meeting son moment, all of these different stories being thrown at us coming to an epic head culminating in the epic final saga of what has been a truly amazing series thus far. At the end of which, perhaps we'll finally find out what Luffy's dream is after being teased yet again. I obviously love the scene of the crew all together. I've always said if you could just give me a couple of chapters of the Straw Hats just interacting, and let's face it, at most times squabbling, then I'll be a joyful, joyful girl more than I already am. And this scene is one for the books because it's Luffy sharing his dream with the people he chose to travel the seas with. And I love the varied individual reactions of the crew and can't help but analyze each of them and compare that to what what I already know of their character to try and get an idea of what Luffy's words to them entailed. Chopper being mesmerized, Frankie perhaps the most excited, Jinbei thoroughly amused, but for me perhaps the response that stood out the most was Nami's. Given that she is a well-known member of the weakling slash cowardly trio, but she didn't react fearfully or concerned, and rather than chastise him for having an impossible dream, Nami was quite accepting and as wild as whatever the dream is, it feels like she knows Luffy, if anyone, may be the one able to achieve such a dream. And so this, in conjunction with everyone else's response, really has me thinking that it's a dream that's not related to danger 
video or violence. But something quite absurd to make the likes of Sanji, Frankie, and Jinbei crying happy. And as for my idea as to what this dream is, I believe Luffy wants to connect all the islands by land so that he can travel, eat every type of food that he wants, and party everywhere without having to cross the ocean. But now, I'm sure you all have your own thoughts. So on that note, let me know by leaving a comment below, as well as your thoughts on everything else that happened in this chapter and where all of these developments are going. Please do subscribe to the channel for more One Piece discussions. You can also join our Joy Fleet Discord server or even become a Patreon member. And I do want to thank all our patrons for help supporting the channel. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.